Ah, it's time to chill out and get ready for a mediocre Q&A live stream. If you're old enough, grab yourself your favorite adult beverage. And if you're not, stick with apple juice. Put your feet up and relax. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. And now let's cue up the intro music. Yo, what is up, everybody? How are you all doing? So I've got my wife, Jill, sitting here today. Hi. And um, we're going to ask her a few questions about a few things. And, you know, you guys can ask questions in the chat, too. Um, obviously, I got stuff I want to cover. Uh, a couple questions. I actually got a few new emails. I get usually one a month or something like that. But this time I got a couple this month. People ask me, you know, just in general what my story is. So... I'm going to cover that real quick. I know a lot of you guys have heard everything, but we have new viewers coming into the channel. Ironically, a lot of the new viewers actually um, came from YouTube started having me do YouTube shorts and they were asking me to do YouTube shorts. So I've done a few and it's a little weird because I'm not I'm not into this whole social media thing. It's a little weird to me, some of the stuff. But anyways, I tried the YouTube shorts and. I have some that just exploded, like insane numbers. I, th I think I have a YouTube short that has more views than any one of my videos right now. It's really weird. But it brought a lot of like negative traffic to the channel, too, in a weird way. Like there's some good stuff, but then it brought, you know, I brought a lot of subscribers, um, but it brought a lot of negative stuff. It's like because people don't understand what the channel's about. So the video that has the most views is the one where I was pretending or I said like the walk in door got stuck. And, you know, I had to pull the plastic off or whatever. And, and I, I kid you not, the most common question on that video is why would the customer go in the walk-in cooler? And it's like, well, at first I'm like, what are these people thinking? But then I realized for the common person that doesn't know my customer is the restaurant owner. Okay, I guess I get that question, but it's kind of silly where everybody's whining about it and stuff. But anyways, um, so uh, basically, I'm an HVACR service technician. I started working for my father when I was a little kid. Um, long before I met Jill, uh, I was working for my dad from like junior high on. I mean, even in elementary school, I'd go to work with him. My parents were split up. My dad would pick me up from my mom's house and take me home, and then we'd run calls on the way home. Um, but started working for him. Ironically, I told him, I, I, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I told him that I never wanted to do this. Like I hated this. I absolutely hated working because 
all he would ever have me do during the summertime is I would work on the roof when it was really hot and I would change air conditioning filters and change swamp cooler pads and adjust belts on exhaust fans. So all I ever knew of this was, or majority of what I knew was just working in the hot summer and it just wasn't my thing. So, um, went into high school, uh, went to work for a body shop during high school, worked for a body shop, working on cars, auto collision for like two years, and then just realized that wasn't my thing. Uh, came to work full time in 2002 for my dad. And then, uh, here we are now we run the company together. Um, he doesn't work anymore. He's just in the office, administrative kind of stuff. And in that midst, I had met Jill. Uh, we actually met in high school. Um, yeah, we were working at the body shop. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I was, uh, yeah, I was working at the body shop when Before she met me. Started working with your dad. That's right. And then, uh, that is right. So you knew when I officially, so th- and that, like, I remember you saying it. Or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, uh, but it uh, it's it's definitely interesting because you have only ever known this. So uh, perspective, I get emails all the time from other people, and they're saying, "Hey, you know, um, you know, what advice do you have for you know he wants to get into the trade and his wife knows nothing about it, or or that kind of stuff." And uh, it's an interesting dynamic because this is all you've ever known yeah. is, is me well, working in the trade the time too, like our schedules just kind of like, I don't know. Our schedules have always just kind of like matched up for it. If that's like the right way to say it, like, cause I was working nights and yeah. you were always working like you still are. So it was yeah. just like, you know, we just always catch each other when we can. Yeah, that's right. So, yes. I mean, w- you know, when we were younger before we had kids, I mean, we saw each other for a glimpse at nighttime, right? When we when we lived in our apartment, like we would basically, you would go to work because she was a waitress. You would go to school during the day and then go yeah, to work. Yeah, well, I was working like a preschool and then I was work- going to school and then I'd work restaurants at night. Yeah, so, yeah, we were both busy. So, so I think it just kind of it's 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 definitely evolved. interesting. So you know that that's my story essentially. I started making these videos as a training aid for my employees. It turned into something, and here we are. I don't know twenty. It was November of twenty seventeen. So what is that? Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. We're going on five years this year on YouTube. That's crazy. Five years. That's nuts. Um, and I'd say like your YouTube stuff worked out too because you would work on it when I was going to work. That's how it started. Yeah, <laughs> That's definitely. That's how it started. Yeah. And yeah. now I'm home more. So I guess I see it a little bit more with like how much time it takes for you. Yeah. Like in the last couple of years, I've noticed yeah. more and more. Yeah. And and uh, we're definitely playing with some things here right now. Yeah. We're working on the microphone stuff. Yeah. You got to you gotta eat the mic. I as bet. They say. I am yeah. not used to all this. Yeah. These headphones throw me off. The microphone yeah, throws go. me off. <laughs> It's 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 a work in progress, right? It makes it look all easy, like most things. Yeah, um, I can hear it. I'm over here, like subtly trying to move the mic closer to her, closer to her, closer to her, because <laughs> I could hear it. You're good. Um, so, anyways, you know, I started these videos as a training aid, and then uh, it just turned into something. I never planned on it, and I kind of I have that on my list of things to talk about right now. At this point, right now, at where I am, f- almost five years into YouTube. How do you feel from where it started till now? D- I mean, be honest. Am I am I too distant from you because of it? I mean, obviously there's benefits from it too. Yeah. Well, I think at times like it's a lot more and then sometimes it's I don't know, a lot less and then I don't know, we usually tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so we talk about it and then you're like, "Okay, I'll try to scale back like a lot of the times with the comments and all that like answering it's a lot you're on your phone a lot if you're not in your office yeah so we've, we've talked to that and you've I don't know, it's gotten better fix your mic right now that's kind of moving around yeah see we're working through this <laughs> um now do you think obviously since uh since the youtube thing really took off um before that jill had been asking me you know if uh not asking, we'd been discussing on whether or not you were going to quit your job. Now this was before YouTube or anything like that. And the reason why wasn't because she wanted to spend time doing whatever. It was because our kids schedules are insane. So we have two teenage daughters and and I was still working nights and I'd get home at one in the morning and I'd, I'd get up for my day at 6am. 
so yeah and do all the things during the day and then go to work at night it was just kind of re- i know a lot of people do that but it's exhausting yeah so so, <laughs> so. you know we were kind of discussing it and then COVID happened and it just kind of she got laid off anyways from her job and so it just kind of never went back essentially yeah well you guys all got used to me being home you guys all chimed in too yes <laughs> we appreciated it for sure because it's awesome and uh you know for so many years she had worked and it was difficult because I mean, that affects your relationship. It affects the kids and everything. It's interesting because there's things that we still like recently, we were talking about something with the kids and and we were like, Oh yeah. You remember when we went and did this, I was talking to my daughters and my wife was like, uh, I don't remember that. And then my daughter was like, yeah, cause you were at work. And it's like, Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But we do a lot without you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, so, you know, it's just, one of those things so it's either both of us we're gone now it's just one yeah and 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 i like it having her home now because it definitely um helps the channel hold on i'm turning something that's what it is guys i fixed it sorry about the audio lower than no i I had the noise gate on so whenever she stopped talking it would mute her mic so that solved the problem so now i fixed it i remember i turned that on once before um all right. So with uh, the, the the videos, obviously, my time really started to get busy because I work a full time job. I run a business. Right. And then the videos just turned into this thing and it starts turning into emails and questions and everything. And at first with the emails and the questions and, and I imagine you guys can all relate this to normal work stuff, too, because it's the fact that I'm hyper obsessed with what I do, whatever I'm doing, I'm super hyper focused. Would you say that's fair? Yes. I'm sorry. My dog is currently standing <laughs> right here trying to chase his tail. Um, so being a good distraction. Yes, he's being a very good distraction. That's kind of annoying right now. Um, in the midst of all this, yeah, so the comments, the questions, all that stuff, it just started getting crazy. And so that was the whole start of these live streams. That's why I started them was to consolidate the questions. Um, before we go any further, I do want to get into a few things here quick. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm addressing some questions that some people had asked me. I already answered that one. I'm go- I've got a list in front of me as usual, guys. Um, I'm not very like fluid with this. It doesn't go super smooth when I'm going through this half the time. Uh, lately, I did want to discuss this. This is something new that I kind of found, and I don't know if you realized how bad this is going to get or not, but I found eBay. Okay. I mean, obviously I've known what eBay was for years. Right. And I used to use it many, many years ago. Honestly, I thought eBay was done, but it's a thing and it's awesome right now. So old HVAC tools, just, I probably shouldn't be telling you guys this because you're probably going to steal all my cool tools, but Google vintage HVAC tools, uh, look it up on eBay or wherever you're going to purchase stuff from. And there is so much amazing stuff. So yeah, grab them before he does. Exactly. (laughs) Save us some money. So um, I actually just bought this Simpson. It's a a vintage Simpson 470. Uh, Has to be one of the first digital meters, if not really early. Has to be. But this thing is pretty awesome. I picked it up from eBay for 20 bucks. Uh, There's one on there for 400 bucks. That one might still work. I don't know if this one works or not, but for 20 bucks, how could I not pass that one up? I just had to do it. And then I've got some other stuff coming too. Um, I found some really cool stuff on eBay. So that is something that I've been having a lot of fun with lately. And it started because my buddy Chris Eads, uh, I shouldn't say buddy, but acquaintance Chris Eads with uh, AC Easy T. I talked about it, I think, on the last video and on Overtime. It was a gentleman that I met at the HVACR training symposium in Florida, uh, Brian Orr's event. And uh, he had given me some vintage tools. And uh, I think I'm sure I've shown this before. This hey, is one of my favorite me. ones right now. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones right now. And this is a uh, Robin Air leak detector from the 70s that he had given me. But anyways, that kind of started it off. And then it's just been going. And I have some of my dad's stuff up there and have some stuff behind me. But it's been pretty cool. And I'm really digging that right now. All right. So, um, yeah, eBay spending spree. That's right. But 20 bucks at a pop is no big deal, right? Um, so, uh, all right, cross that one off. I'm going to get to the questions in the live chat as usual, guys. Uh, I see people in the chat. If you guys have questions or comments or things you want me to cover, put them in caps lock. That helps me to see what's going on there. Uh, Philip duty says you're an HVAC guy being thrown into refrigeration. Any advice? 
Uh, Philip, your company is doing you a disservice if you don't understand refrigeration and the controls. So be cautious about people just throwing you into things. Maybe you're just being, you know, exaggerating, but uh, refrigeration in general, it's, it's not a horrible thing. It depends on what type, right? You should never just be thrown into rack refrigeration or industrial refrigeration, but light commercial, like I do, uh, multiplex systems, five horsepower and under compressors, it's more or less just a change in temperature. The concepts are still the same. If you understand the electrical uh, side of things, you'll be just fine. Okay. Just more safety controls and stuff. And it's not a big deal. Um, I do want to address in my last video, I had talked about uh, um, one of the, the staff of the restaurant when I had gone downstairs. It was actually the teaser on my video. When I went downstairs, he was telling me how he defrosted the coil while I was working on it on the roof. OK, um, and in the video, I, I expressed some frustration. And even in the closing words, I talked about it. So, Jill, I don't, you probably didn't hear this, but in my last video, um, I was working at a restaurant. Um, and when I went downstairs, one of the staff had told me that he noticed the thing that I was working on was all frozen up. So he took it upon himself to go ahead and melt all that ice while I was working on it with a water hose. And I told him, I go, you know, that was very dangerous of you because there was electricity running through that. And he goes, well, he goes, I only did it because I've seen you do it. And I go, okay, but I'm a technician. You're not, you yeah, know, like, I think I I think I you probably heard, heard this. Yeah. And then, somebody. and then, um, you know, he could have been electrocuted yeah. is the thing, you know, because it wasn't off. I had, I was working on it, doing things to it. So, um, I, I did get some feedback in my videos that maybe I was too hard on him. No, I absolutely was not. I'm not going to stand back. I was very, very frustrated because it's actions like that from people that don't understand or are completely ignorant to things that can severely hurt people and cause issues. And I don't want that on my conscience. It wouldn't have been my fault, but still like, no, that that wasn't cool. And uh, when I expressed the what happened to management too, they were they about lost their stuff. Okay, because that particular person, uh, you know, he should know better. He's a competent person. But one thing I will say is the particular place that I was working at, without reviewing any details. Okay, and I, if I if you haven't heard this before, the only comments absolutely guaranteed that will get deleted in my YouTube comments is guesses as to the restaurants that I'm working at. Okay. So anyways, I'm not going to reveal the restaurant, but this particular restaurant, they they're big, um, on their brewery. Okay. And they basically have staff that is there just for the brewery. And that particular person was part of that staff and he just, he knows better than that. So anyways, but it's stuff like that that we have to watch out for because you never know what people are watching. Right. Um, when you're working in a restaurant, you know, be cautious about what you show kitchen staff. Obviously, if they're standing there watching you, there's not much you can do about it. But, you know, don't instruct people. Be very cautious unless it's a manager because managers, it's their business. You have to do what they ask because you're working for them. Right. Management, if they want to know what's going on, then I'm going to show them. But I do not ever show kitchen staff. And if management advises me to show kitchen staff, I usually try to talk the management out of it because you don't want kitchen staff thinking that it's okay to go and turn on things, right? And I'm going to give you an example. Working on a beer walk-in cooler, and I get there, and it uh, has a bad compressor. So I spend, you know, 11 hours, uh, 8 hours, whatever it is, in the middle of the night changing a compressor. So you get it all done, you turn it on, and if you don't know, after a beer walk-in has been down for 8 hours, it's going to take a long time to come down to temperature. So I'm not really going to hang around for 4 hours, right? I'm going to check the system vitals, make sure it's operating good, and then I'm probably going to bounce and then tell the customer, hey, I'll come back out and follow up. Well, I've had kitchen staff that was instructed to watch me do things, go in and turn the temperature controller on the beer walk in before I went to go work on it, thinking that was going to solve the problem. Now, yes, it's my fault for not checking, but it's things like that that lead to headaches because I had already bounced. Right. And you know, the next day they're like, it's still maintaining 45 degrees. And it's like, oh, and then I go out there in the temp control and then I talk to them and they're like, oh yeah, we had adjusted it trying to fix it. And it's like, don't do that. You know, things like that. So you need to be careful showing people how to do things or letting them see you how to, you know, how to do things it, within your control, um, because that can just lead to nuisance problems. Right. And yes, there's fault on my side for not catching that before I left too, but that stuff kind of happens. So, um, so obviously people just tuning in right now don't know what's going on. I have my wife, Jill, on here. My wife uh, is actually on social media. She, you can find her on Instagram, and she does a little bit on Facebook um, under the uh, name at HVACR Wife. That so, one's a little quieter over there. The Facebook, on Facebook one? Yeah. But, yeah, a little but more Instagram. active on Instagram. A little bit. 
So one of the things that we wanted to try to do, if you guys haven't already, uh, Jill and I have done a video series called How We Live the HVACR Life. We did five or six videos and, and actually what you guys don't we, know is we recorded another yeah. one but i never posted it yeah we well we had to go through and edit and i wasn't super confident yeah. about it and then i kind of like to re do it and then it's just finding the time with us together it's difficult yeah at this time like usually i'm gone right now so even though when you're doing your live stream i'm not home i take the um, kids to their practice and yeah. So even though she doesn't work anymore, she's super busy. For those of you, you guys probably already know this, but we have two teenage kids. I'm sure you guys go through all that, too, that are active in sports and high school and learning how to drive and all this stuff. And it's it's time consuming. Right. And and there's times that I forget that, too. And I'm sure you've realized that. And there's times that I may vent frustrations because I'm a dodo head, right? <laughs> and I say I'm frustrated because, you know, this isn't what I want for dinner or whatever. And I'm not being rude, but we're just having a discussion about it. And, you know, there's, um, I'm human. I I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not some machine, some robot that just comes on here and, and it is this perfect person, right? We do have problems, you know? You usually listen yeah. to me. And so then the problems don't exist anymore <laughs> once you listen to me. <laughs> but... But for real, I mean, you know, we have problems and we have disagreements and issues. We are real. And that's something that I want people to understand. I realized in the beginning of my channel when I started posting these videos, I almost felt like an imposter syndrome and I felt fake because I would find I would feel the need to edit out my mistakes. And I realized quickly that I wasn't going to do that anymore. And and it's made me feel so much more happy, right? I feel so much better about the videos because I keep my mistakes in there. Now, I address my mistakes. But the fact that I'm trying to get across to everybody is I'm not some perfect Instagram person that only posts the perfect pictures, right? And there's nothing against the guys on Instagram. I know a lot of them, they're great guys, but I'm just trying to make a point. You know, Instagram doesn't give you the ability to see people's flaws unless they're blatantly posting those flaws, okay? For the most part, people post happy moments on Instagram. Well, yeah, social media in general. Social media in general. And I feel like we all need to show a little bit of real. I get criticism, right? I And it's cool Every, to each their own, right? I got criticism recently. I got two emails from people that said uh, they can't watch my channel anymore. They love my videos, but they can't watch my channel because I curse too much. I, I was kind of confused by that one, too, because I don't really curse on this channel. I keep it really clean. Now ironically i really wanted to send that person an email back with the overtime show like hey i think like, you should watch this because this is a little bit safer for you because the overtime show if you guys don't know we started a jar over here for yeah, chris no, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the kids <laughs> we get to go on vacation now what is it my my daughter one time because i was on the overtime show uh, the hvac overtime show youtube friday evenings uh 6 5 p.m pacific with my buddies we do a live show it's like four guys hanging out at the bar. That's exactly what it is. And we're just having a good time. But my daughter one day, she's like, dad, you keep saying bad words really loud. She's like, my friends are on the other end of the, cause she's talking on her computer to someone at the time or something, you know? Yeah. But the overtime shows something to totally that. different. So that made me laugh, but you know, I'm human and I'm not going to change. Like that's, that's who I am. You know, I try to keep this channel kind of clean because I know a lot of people, but I, I, I'm still blown away what he thought I cursed about on this channel. Cause that's not even it. Um, but yeah, it just kind of dumbfounds me. <laughs> I, I, I do know he shares that all the time. Like, yes. Hey Zeus, she knows that. <laughs> and, and he still, I catch him still taking pictures. I'm like, dude, what is this? Can you stop? <laughs> oh, Poor man. guy. Yeah, I know. Um, oh gosh. Yeah. I wanted to send him over to overtime. So, uh, for those that are just coming in, my wife, Jill here. So now, um, that's, I'm looking through the chat right now and this is hilarious. <laughs> Oh, man, Jesus, you cracked me up. So uh, Jesus Tapia, his name on the overtime show is Jesus Fish. Oh, Can you tell it. me who came up with that name? Who? Yeah, who do you think came up with the name Jesus Fish for no, Jesus I'm Tapia? Sure. Oh, it would have been Bill. Does that surprise you? <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah. No. Bill has the sense uh, of humor uh, that is ridiculous. So um, I do want to let you guys know, too, okay, to everybody that's watching. Um, if you guys have stuff that you want to talk to me about, if you have questions, feel free to send me an email to hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Okay. But I'm going to preface that if I miss your comments or questions in this chat, feel free to send them over. Okay. But I'm going to preface that with understand something. I can't get to everybody's emails. I try, I try, but I also have a family that I need to pay attention to. 
And did you want to say something? Yeah. And, and, you know, I can't all the time and I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't mean to be offensive to anybody. Okay. But if you send me an email that says you want to talk on the phone, it's just not going to happen. Okay. I I have a weird quirk. I was trying to, (laughs) I said that as a singular, I have a weird quirk. I have multiple quirks. Okay. Plural. Um, and I'm sure she's got all kinds of stuff, but um, quirks or things to say about your quirks. I'm just kidding. You could say whatever you want. Things <laughs> like, to say about my quirks. No. What are you saying right now? But um, I, I just, I don't like to call random people on the phone. It's just not my thing. Okay. So if you want to have a conversation with me, we can try to talk through email, maybe through a, a, a private message on Facebook or Instagram, you know, slide into the DMs. Okay. But um, Bill said that on the overtime show the other day, he was like, I'm going to slide into this dude's DMs, like one of the people he wanted to have on the show. And it cracked me up because that has a little different meaning. But um, uh, sorry, I distract myself and go off on weird tangents. But yeah, send me an email. I'll try to help you out. But just understand that I'm a busy person and, and I can only get to so much. OK, so I don't mean to offend if I'm not answering them right away. Um, Let's see, uh, real quick, a couple things I want to cover. As usual, in my last video, I misspoke. And yes, I did mean to say that the, the fan cycle switches for all those compressors are wired in parallel. I said series, enough people emailed me that I felt the need to have to address this. I mista- uh, misspeak or incorrectly talk about things like that all the time. Oh, another thing that I wanted to address that kind of surprised me was about a year No, about two years ago at the previous AHR Expo, not this one, but the previous one, I ran into a teacher that uh, said, you know, he walked up to me and he goes, uh, you know, your your videos, you know, he had a student with him and his student was like, oh, it's really cool to meet you. And then the teacher was like, yeah, you know, um, your videos are pretty good. You know, uh, you know, there's there's some things that I don't like about them, but they're pretty good. And it's like, okay, And I'm like, all right, cool. I said, would you mind? Like I said, you're not going to offend me, but like, would you mind telling me what those problems about my videos are? And, and his issues with my videos were that I make too many mistakes and, you know, and that I'm showing those mistakes. And that was a legit problem that he had Hmm. with me because he thought that because I'm a public figure, I should be perfect. Right. And Here's the interesting thing. Like, first off, these videos are actually not meant to be educational. Like, I get that there's some educational stuff in them. These videos were, you know, for my employees. And then they kind of morphed into an excuse for me to continue talking to myself. Like, that's really what they are. And um, I mean, obviously, I know that there's some educational value. But at the same time, I think it's wrong to edit out your mistakes. And I feel like we all need to understand that we're real, you know, like I was talking about a few minutes ago, we can't always be perfect and we need to be able to, to, um, let other people know that, yeah, we make mistakes, but it's so important to learn from those mistakes. That that's the most important thing is, is how you grow from your mistakes. And someone just posted on social media. I'm trying to remember who it was. Cause I showed it to you too. And it said something, I'm paraphrasing the, the thing, but it said, uh, you know, it's really expensive to make mistakes. Wait, what was it? I know I showed it to you. It said it's it's uh, it's really expensive. It was it was paraphrasing, saying something along the lines like of it's others, better to learn from other people's other mistakes. mistakes yeah, I can't remember the quote, but it was but a very interesting one. People learn from your mistakes that way. Like if they go into something yeah. and they would have gone and done it that way, they would be like, oh wait, no, this isn't right. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, that. You know, I, you know, the interesting thing that you guys don't know, and I think I might have put it in videos one time, maybe two times, like jokingly around, but I have a lot of crutch words uh, that I use. So whenever I'm recording YouTube videos, right, I have a bunch of clips on my phone from when I'm recording. Like I turn it on, talk for 10 seconds, turn it off, do some stuff and then keep doing that. And every time I start a clip, for some reason, I have like three or four crutch words. OK, so um, yeah, OK and so are the two biggest ones. So I have to edit those out. But I'm noticing that this is this dynamic of you being next to me. I'm having a hard time because I'm, I'm like, when you get done talking, I'm like, all right, you know, like I, I, I'm like, like, wait, yeah, I'm, I'm confused. Like I'm just confused that someone's sitting next to me. You are throwing me off. Definitely. Thrown off too. You're thrown off too. This is not my normal thing. Uh, all right. So I already answered this one. Um, I'll get to the chat here in just a second. We'll hit some more questions up. Um, 
in uh, recent video two, I was pumping oil into a compressor and a gentleman named Ong, I don't know if I butchered your name and I apologize. I was pumping oil into the compressor because it was low on oil. Actually, I don't think I've, no, I made that video. Yeah. Anyways, I was adding oil to a compressor and as I was pumping the oil, he was curious how come the oil didn't come out my refrigerant hose as I was pumping the oil. And that is actually a good question. There's ball valves in the oil pump. So it basically means that I have to overcome the system pressure to push the oil into it. And when I stop, the system pressure closes the ball valve. So that's the simple answer to that one, okay? Um, all right. Uh, if anybody's wondering, I'm used to this like HVAC talk. I just nod and smile. Was it we we I'm recently like there, we then. recently went out to dinner yep. with uh, Ty Branneman and his wife Perla um, and Ty had messaged me before we were going to go out to dinner it was actually a live stream a couple months back that's why I missed the live stream by the way but um you couldn't pass up an opportunity to have a dinner with an awesome person like Ty Branneman right so we went out to dinner and uh, Ty had told me before he goes hey he goes but uh, let's try to keep the HVAC talk down to a minimum and I'm like all right yeah we could do that that way our wives aren't bored do you think we kept it down to a minimum. I mean, it was minimal-ish, but we weren't bored. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about it's HVAC time. the whole I mean, time. I'm pretty it was, used it to it, funny. even when you get together with your dad. You guys talk work. and yeah. I, I imagine, too, though, <laughs> that for Perla, because Perla and Ty have only been together for a few years, so this is new to her, too. So, you know, like you grew up with this, you know, that like whenever we go places is and that's a question, too. Like I don't sometimes I'm not in the moment or maybe I am too in the moment. But like when my dad and I are together, do we talk about work a lot or do you we do. talk? We do. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know yeah. that, you know, it just kind of comes across because I just talk, you know. But all right. Let's see what else we got going on in the chat. Uh, do I think walk-in freezers or coolers are harder to work on or is AC units hard to work on? Micah. Um, I mean that they all kind of use the same concept, but I mean, to, to be honest, split system air conditioners and walk-in freezers are probably the most difficult to work on of those two package unit air conditioners and walk-in coolers are probably easier, but really it's not that difficult. It just adds more electrical complex complexities. And then with split systems, it adds more piping complexities and, um, airflow. Well, I mean, airflow is all the way around, but yeah, that's my answer to that one. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. The picture of that bill. Oh, yeah, that is funny. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. Biggest crutch word, chingus. Uh, chingus is a big word. Have you ever heard me say chingus in personal? Not often. Yeah, I don't think. it's something that I, I have You're weird working. words. Uh, guys, I have issues, okay? I genuinely talk to myself. Even when we're loading the car or I'm helping him do something, He'll be like talking and I'll be like, what? No, I'm not talking to you. Oh, all right. Like, no wonder why. See, like, see. Even, <laughs> like, and sometimes he's like in a, in a mode too. You're like, I'm not talking to you. Oh, all right then. Yeah. Like I am <laughs> like, hyper focused doing? and I talk I to myself. We, I thought I was helping you like lift this into the car or something. And you're just like. Yeah. Talking to yourself. Well, that I will say that majority of the time that oh, you God. see me in that mode is when I'm focused. Yeah. Like, for instance, you're focused, but you were we were lit literally I was like, I don't even I can't reference the Well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use an example that's going to make sense and watch your face and let's see if she reacts red. to this one. No, yeah. um, no, Probably. it's not one of those stories. No, but it's going to like a week or two ago. No, not a week or two ago, about a month ago, I was putting together something in the backyard. Uh, it's like this hammock thing that I got for our family with like three hammocks and she was out there trying to help me and I was hyper focused and their instructions were worse than Ikea instructions and it pissed me off because they weren't making sense and I was having a hard time and I was in one of those hyper focused modes where I'm working and she was giving suggestions and those suggestions were not what I wanted to hear because I'm trying to figure this out and that's not helping me. It's you know, like it, it wasn't helping me. So I have issues. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I think I, I think I ended up telling you to put it away for the night and like try again tomorrow. Cause I'm like, obviously yeah. something's not lining up because you're not like seeing it clearly. I don't know. And the next day I came home and it was built. Yep. And all that it was, was the instructions didn't imply which direction a certain bar needed to go. And it was upside down. So <laughs> partially my fault, but their Pretty instructions bad. also didn't give any logic to it but i have those issues guys 
I know I joke about mental stuff, but like I do have anger issues. I have to deal with them every day. I'm still a hyper focused person. I tend to shut everything off. We were just in the car on the way home and I got really irritated because we were sitting in traffic and some dude was trying to merge in front of me and I yelled. I was screaming at him from in the car. Road rage. Yeah, road rage. But I don't act on it, but I'm pissed, you know, and it's like. I, I have to learn how to deal with that stuff. And it's something that I have to live with. I've gone and seen a doctor about anger issues and stuff. And and what I got from it, how it worked for me You're was that. you better. Thank doing you. doing much better. But how it works for me is, is that this is something I have to deal with every day. And I also have to be cognizant of my family. And that's the difficult thing. Uh, that's what drove me to go to the doctor in the first place was I was worried about my family. I never wanted to hurt my family. I'd never hurt my family, done anything bad. But... One day I got really angry. I punched a hole in a wall. It felt really, really good, too good. And then it was instant shame when I saw the hole. No. And then she came home and I didn't even say anything about the hole. What happened? And then she's like, Why is there a hole? I'm so mad about it. Do you even remember what you were mad about? I don't even know. It was probably me and my dad, and I was mad about something (laughs) or something like that. Who knows? But I have to learn. So for me, the way that it all worked out with those issues and stuff is, is that I learned that this is something I have to deal with for the rest of my life. I went to see a therapist. I was diagnosed all kinds of stuff and I took medicine for it. And and I went, you know, and worked on myself and learned that I have to not react as fast, but I still have to deal with those issues every day. It will be with me for life and it still comes out, but I try to get it out. And one thing as a guy too, and I think this is a guy thing more so than a female thing is in general, I feel like we try we tend to bottle things up. And that is one of my biggest issues is I bottle things up. And even this, like two weeks ago, I had an issue where I'd been bottling something up. And I, even though I'm hyper aware of it, I still, it happens. It just gets buried in there. And then, and you're just so agitated that it's not fair to the other person to explode the way that you're going to explode because it's, it's little petty things that all led to an explosion. So Talk, talk to someone it. talk to someone you know like seriously it even took you a while to come around to fully talking to me yeah so yeah i mean time, definitely it's important uh what was the hardest ac that i've ever worked on um it was a 1964 carrier 15 10 ton or 15 ton split system uh i can say the name of the restaurant it was a a joe's crab shack because i don't do any other work anymore and the uh this is an old old condensing unit i believe it had an 06 d carlisle in it um the 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 air handler had the compressor in it and had a remote condenser on the roof it wasn't so much that it was a difficult piece of equipment to work on. And the point I'm trying to make here, it was because I'd never worked on something that old. I'd never really had to get in there and, and work on something. And I didn't understand when you open it up and the contactors this big, it's intimidating, right? So it wasn't so much that I didn't know how to work on it. It's that I wasn't familiar with it. So I was a little apprehensive, right? And I find that with a lot of things, anything new that I go to work on, I tend to be intimidated. Um, If I work on, you know, my favorite ice machines, Manitowoc and Hoshizaki. But 15 years ago, I hated Manitowoc and I only liked Hoshizaki. Now I love Manitowoc because I work on them all the time and I'm very familiar with the way they work. You put me on an isomatic, a fullet, uh, Scotsman, whatever. Right. And, and I'm like, well, I tend to want to say I don't like those, but it's more or less because I get frustrated with them and they're not simple to me. So understand that difficulty is just something you have to work through, right? If something's difficult and it's hard, um, majority of the time you need to take a step back and think about it for a minute. And a lot of the times you will solve your problems and you'll realize it's not so difficult, but the best thing I advice I can give to everybody is read and try to better yourself and educate yourself. Uh, I will find so, you know, a weird thing and maybe this makes sense to you. The type of person that I am, maybe you can answer if this is something you notice too, but the type of person that I am, I like to read about things and I, I only, if I'm really interested in them, right? Just because I need to learn about a new piece of equipment if I don't have an interest in learning about it, it's hard for me to retain any information, right? But I do really good on that particular piece of equipment after I had an issue and I I couldn't figure it out. Then I can read and I can absorb like crazy. So it's interesting how my mind works that I can't motivate myself to dig into it, you know, before, but after I have issues with it, then all of a sudden I have all the motivation in the world. So 
Um, I'm not perfect, you know. I try to educate myself as much as possible, but I feel like he reads up on everything. I I do, but it's interesting though. Like I I don't know. I'm I'm very I don't know. That's you read up on everything. You're like, are we gonna get this? Let me do some research. Yeah, I do research. I I had a I, I had a what did I have in the cart when we were at Costco before this? I had the the oh Facebook gosh. meta VR, whatever thing that you put on your head. And I was like, I'm going to get one of those. And that's why I thought you wanted to go to Costco with me. I was like, oh, you had no alternative. I had no alternative motive. I just seen it there. And I was like, oh, I've been but thinking about like, one really? of these. We'd... So I was good. I had it in the car and we're walking around. And then I start doing research on my phone as she's shopping. I'm Thankfully, like looking on videos. See that research finally. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. They're coming out with a new one in like a year and a half. Nah, I'm just going to throw it back in the car. Like I do research. So yeah, start saving your pennies every month. So yeah. The Oculus that. Rift was four hundred dollars. The new one's eight to twelve hundred dollars. So just I'll be start prepared. saving now. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Let's see what else. Uh, why don't you want Chris? <laughs> Why don't you want me to make an OnlyFans with air conditioning stuff? That's not what that's for. Why don't you let me? Because but the irony is that it'd be funny if I made an OnlyFans if I had just pictures of my feet or literally just pictures of fans. Like, that would be hilarious. OnlyFans with just fans. And then people pay, it's right? It's not already on there. I wouldn't know. because I, I don't know either. I've never <laughs> been on it. I've genuinely never been on OnlyFans just because I know I'd get in trouble. So, right. But I think it would be really smart if I made an OnlyFans. That would be an epic troll. Wouldn't nah, it? We'll just leave it. Not so You're much. You're already on TikTok. That's that's, that's enough. hard enough. That's enough. Uh, are you holding back? Michael says that you're holding back that I'm difficult. No, I wouldn't say like you're difficult. He's like, joking. I'm difficult he, in my I know ways. Michael. I know him. Yeah. He's joking around. But still, I mean, do you think I'm a difficult person? Not really. Okay. You kind of like either I don't know. You tell it. <laughs> How I tell is. it how it is, but or is it is it like a Stockholm like, syndrome thing? Like you've you've known me so long, and your your head's so screwed up that you're just okay with it. Like I mean, the the you no. that that met me when like, you were seventeen, would you if you were transplanted to right now? I would, don't think that you're diff that you're different. I'm not. I know that's interesting. I, like, I don't think that you're. I think I'm different from when I, I was seventeen. That different. You were still hyper focused and doing things. I, I don't know. That's interesting. Thank you. Maybe wanted to be trying to be funnier when you were younger. I don't know. See, look at now. Now, Mr. Green just stole my idea. Now yeah. he's going to make an OnlyFans about See, fans or feet. Say things on the internet. I'm just kidding. Damn it. So <laughs> there's uh, the one thing I'm going to tell you guys right now. And I was giving advice to someone, uh, my buddy, Pat Finley uh, from Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. He's starting a podcast and uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool dude. I've interacted with him on social media for a while. But um, he was talking about social media stuff and I gave him some advice and I said, look, if you ever have ideas, go and buy the domain before you say anything about the idea. Right. Because that's just common sense. So I have all these ideas and I'm always going out and buying domains about things that I'm going to do. By the way, we've got a new project coming, but I haven't told you about it yet. So um, how it works, though, see, pretty much she gets signed up for things. Uh, actually, I did tell you about this. But anyways, I got to talk to the guys about it first. Um, but it would be more work. Uh, I lost my train of thought, though. Where was I talking about? I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah I totally lost my train of thought. I really did. Um, someone had asked me a question. Uh, do I ever repair defrost clocks instead of replacing them? No, it's not practical. Uh, a defrost clock costs, costs about $125, $130 or something like that. And then you mark it up and sell it to the customer. My labor cost is damn near that much money. So the amount of time I would spend fixing it, it's just not practical to try to repair it. Plus, and this is a question that I get a lot. How come I don't change bearings and motors? How come I don't do this or do that or do, you know? Uh, when you have employees, you have to start making decisions and you have to base your decisions. You can't base them off of your own skills, right? Because I'm a technically minded person and I love getting into this stuff, but I'm limited by my weakest employee, right? So I need to make sure that I don't take on tasks that I can't trust and or properly train my employees to do. If I have my employees trying to repair circuit boards and trying to change bearings and motors, when you have a customer that needs their equipment fixed yesterday, you know, it's just not practical when you can go and pick up a motor. I live in 
Los Angeles, right? Or just in the outskirts of Los Angeles, we have every major supply house. A lot of the hubs for all the supply houses that are nationwide are here in California. So I have all the parts, uh, the parts typically available to me. So you have to think about it as a, as a logical person. Is it practical to have an employee spend hours to try to repair something and then find out it didn't work? Or is it better just to replace that part with a bad, with a good part, you know? And obviously the customer is part of that decision too. So, um, let's see. Right on. All right, we're going through here. Um, why don't we uh, do a giveaway? Because uh, just so that you guys know, my wife, Jill, is the person that handles the shipping and the merchandise and all that different stuff from our website, uh, HVACRvideos. I almost told my email. Uh, HVACRvideos.com is the website. So we have merchandise and all that different stuff. So what we're going to do right now is we're actually going to give away some items that I are coming into the coming into the future. Yeah, I haven't even made these available yet. So uh, I've got some stickers right here. So what I want you to do, uh, as usual, I'm going to pick uh, someone random in the chat. We're going to pick a couple people random in the chat right now. So what I'm going to do is when I pick your name, uh, you need to send me an email to hvcrvideos at gmail.com. And you need to, you know, put sticker in the subject line or something like that. Uh, and we'll definitely get one of these out to you. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to have is actually Jill because she doesn't know any of you. So I'm going to have her pick a few random people. So go ahead and start chatting. Uh, we'll let that start climbing up real quick. And then we'll just randomly pick uh, some people from here. So go ahead and start the chat going right now. We'll get some stickers sent out. Keep it going. And once it gets moving right here, we'll pick a couple different people. Uh, you don't care what you say. Just say me or anything like that. So we'll go into here. Let's see what we got going on. Um, pop, 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 pop. All right. So let's pick uh, someone in here. Jill, just go ahead and tell me when to stop it and pick one person. I'm new to this game. I just pick know. someone right okay. here. Uh, George910. Okay. Go ahead and send me an email to hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Uh, George910. You're one of them. I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget. Um, okay, make sure you reference your uh, your name in there too, okay? Let's pick another person right here. Uh, go ahead and pick someone right there. Any one of them. I don't know. Just pick a name. Yeah. You're trying too hard. Just pick a name. Okay, do Mike B. Mike B. Mike B, send me an email to hvacrvideos at gmail.com. All right, I'll pick a couple more in here. Uh, let's go right here. Uh, Zach Silkey, go ahead and send me an email to hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Zach Silkey. Uh, Cody Cotton. Cody Cotton, send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Cody Cotton. And then uh, we'll pick one more here. Uh, let's pick the last one right here, and let's go down right here. Uh, there we go. Uh, Andrew Beck, send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. So uh, what I need from the, the five people that I picked, uh, George910, Mike B, Zach Silkey, uh, Cody Cotton, and uh, Andrew Beck. Andrew Beck, yeah. Andrew Beck, um, send me those emails and uh, we'll uh, get some stickers sent out to you guys. But we need your address, um, your phone number, your name, and then we'll get them sent out. That'll keep Jill busy for the next hour or something like that while she's figuring all that stuff out. Um, all right, let's go ahead and stop the crazy chat and throw some more questions or things that you want us to cover. If you guys have a question for Jill, throw it in the chat. We'll cover a few real quick. Um, all right, let's see what else we got going on in here. Let's let this chat come up. Um, and we'll see what other questions, um, what do you think, what do you think about the overtime show? So it's vulgar, it's gross. Do you think I'm a dumb dumb for doing it? But, I mean, I don't, I think it's funny that it's live uh -huh. most of the time. No, I'm just kidding. It's, but, uh, no, I think that it's a pretty cool thing for you guys to have. You don't get to do a lot of stuff with 
friends on your own. Right. So it's kind of the thing you have to look, you know, one of the things you have look, to look forward to for yeah. the week. It, it's funny because when the guys on the overtime show, uh, HVAC Overtime on YouTube, when the guys asked me to join the show, so they were in the show with another person and there was a bunch of drama and they split and moved the show to a different channel. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, I was friends with everybody. Uh, Adam reached out to me and he's like, Hey, so, uh, Joe and Bill, uh, they want to, you know, like we were thinking, we were kind of wondering if you wanted to be on a show with us. And they were a little reluctant to ask because they didn't know if that was something I was interested in. And I was like, well, yeah, I I'll be on the show. I said, but my, my schedule's crazy, so I can't commit to it. And um, you guys are going to have to, you know, do most of the producing and everything because I can literally just show up with um, my crazy schedule. And I told them I can't make it a priority. But it's funny because it kind of has become a priority. Yeah. Because I, I, I genuinely mean, look forward to yeah. it. And I, I think you've only missed a few for being, like, super busy at work or something. Or yeah. I think we took you away, like, one time to go on vacation for the weekend. Yeah. And you still logged in to say hi. Right? Even yeah, no, yeah. Even when kidding. it's fun though, I think that it's a good, you know, it's a good group of you guys, and it's something fun for you to do for the week. Like you don't yeah. get to do mu much that like isn't stressful. Jill, how is hot water made? Am I supposed to say like the hot water heater or just? I the think water they were heater? waiting to get me to say hot uh, water heater. Hot I water think heater. or something. <laughs> We joke with that one because I've told her some I of those quotes. I'm like, dang it, they said hot water heater. Yeah. It's just water heater. But I'll, I'll even occasionally say hot water heater every once in a while. Mm -hmm. So, um, let me see what out we got in here. Uh, do I service only restaurants industry uh, or do I do hot side as well? No, I only do refrigeration. I don't do hot side. I mainly do. Um, ooh, that's a good question. Will or uh, Albert Rodriguez says yacht rock. So what do you think about my yacht rock obsession? I tolerate it. I annoy the heck out of my family because <laughs> I have a very eclectic mix of music. And I would say that it changes daily what I want to listen to. Because one minute I'll be listening to Steely Dan and Michael McDonald and groove into that. And then the next minute I'm listening to no effects, Blink-182, uh, like thinking the late 90s when I was in high school, right? Um, and then we together, I I've think I've been listening to the nineties. So that's why you have branched onto it as well. Oh, you think I yeah. gain stuff from you, but <laughs> when we're together, we typically listen to country as usual. We listen. So we listen to everything, literally everything. That's country so. or nineties for me, really. Uh, how does Jill like a steak? I so don't. funny question, Joe. <laughs> I don't eat steak. Why don't you eat steak? Um, I haven't for, oh my gosh, like 25 years. Yeah, so Jill so. primarily eats a pescatarian diet, yeah. pretty much. And no milk, no dairy. Yeah, so she eats fish, uh, vegan, big time. She's big More. on vegan food. If there's food. a vegan option, I take it. If yeah. not, then I'll order She'll the fish. She'll do fish and uh, <laughs> eggs, but she doesn't Sweet. do uh, butter, dairy, anything like that. So Jill has been that way. So that is an That's interesting going thing. On, like, well, that's yeah, an interesting thing because no, that creates and that's something that we've all had to learn to live with. Right. Obviously, my kids have only ever known her being vegan. Right. But, you know, I didn't grow up eating vegan. I, I grew up eating like turkey burgers and stuff. Right. Because mm -hmm. I'm in California. And I used okay? to as well. But, but. Um, but, you know, it's still something that I have to work with. It's not something that's just like, OK, she's a vegan. Da, da, da. You know, no, it's not that easy because obviously she doesn't eat the same way as us. Right. Yeah. So it kind of. I don't know. It, it detours our places if we want to go out to eat. Like it always kind of has to have an option or somewhere close that I can get. Well, that or really like, wasn't. That really wasn't or, where I was well, going. I like was going when I'm more. Making dinner, yeah, there you I go. usually make you guys a dinner and then I all, like make myself that something that I can make from it. Yeah. But no, with everything that's in yours. Yeah. So it, it's it's just so. something that we learn to work with, and it's not that she's wrong, right? Because. Who's right or wrong? She eats one way, I eat one way. It's There's no right or wrong there. It's just there's different. That's all that there is. And it's just a matter of us trying to deal with different, right? Um, all of us, all together. And I feel like right now, again, we're going to get all like sappy on this. But in general, I feel like the entire world is not capable of being different than anybody else right now. Like everybody's so divided over being different. Who cares? Just let people do their thing. You know, like, ugh. yeah, I'm not completely vegan. Somebody yeah. said that's not vegan. Yeah. I'm not completely vegan. No, she just prefers to eat vegan whenever possible is all. Yeah. Um, how have 
I made it work with the stress of this job. Now, I want to ask Jill, how have you made it work with the, before you answer me, I want to know you, how have you been able to deal with the stress of my job? Do you have an answer for that? I don't know that I have an answer. I feel like I've just always known like either for weekends, mostly like you're on call. So I would still plan things like whether it was just like mostly just me and the kids. Cause Let me ask you a question. Like, How many family events have you gone to my family events without me? Oh, I'm not sure. You've done some. You've I've done, done some. Yeah. But it, it's, it's something that happens. A lot of the times if if needed, like if you're not going to work or you're not going to work at that time, like you'll go separately in a different car and then stay as long as you can. OK, so or let me ask you. We go together. And if you get called, we go. So. Yeah, we have to drive two cars to a lot of places or we make a commitment. Like I'll tell her, well, if I get a call, you all got to go home or do you want to take two cars? Um, I genuinely hate taking two cars, but I also don't want to ruin your guys's day, too. Yeah. So because I hate taking two cars, because I hate ruining your day, I genuinely okay. am a person that gets uh, there's something about me that when my day gets a wrench in it, it ruins me. It literally messes me up inside and I become a different person. So um, I struggle with that. And when I am on call, I genuinely do not go anywhere because I don't want the anxiety. Even if I drive another vehicle, it just still sucks well, for me. And to add to that, I think there was one weekend where you were on call and you hadn't gotten called. And so it was middle of the day. You got done working on your video. I had got home and I was like, let's go get lunch. And then we were getting ready to go get lunch and you got called to go to work. Yeah. And it just, it ruined the whole weekend. Like it didn't even ruin the day. You were just like yeah. frustrated for the rest of the weekend. And I was like, oh, okay, this is a reminder to why we don't make plans when yeah. Chris is on call. I have but, issues. I, I, you know, so I know just, them. So it's like those types of things where it's just like, well, if he's on call, I'm going to go ahead and plan our weekend. And then if yeah. you end up being home, awesome. If you end up getting to go with us, awesome. So how do so. I deal with the stress of this job is I don't deal with it. I don't do a good job of dealing with the stress. Um, I've, I've, wor I've been working on it. Uh, one of the things that I've changed about my life from when I long time ago went to go see a doctor about anger issues was I became a better communicator and or I try I hope I have become a better communicator um, that's my intention but Jill uh, my, my mom and my dad um, they ran this business together before my mom and my dad got divorced and uh, it, the business created a wrench between the two of them so with that being said and that was growing up with that being said in the beginning I didn't have her have anything to do with this business right um, it, I, she would just, she knew I got paid. She knew what I did, but I didn't express the frustrations of the day to day to her. I just kept it from her because I felt like I was protecting her. Alaska, thank you very much for that super chat, man. You didn't need to do that. Um, <laughs> that's for putting up with me. Oh. So, um, but uh, I don't do a good job of dealing with it. I've just tried to become a better communicator. So that way, at least she understands why I'm stressed out. That's the, the first step of it. And then I'm just slowly become trying to be better and better. Um, have, have, you, have you noticed a difference since I started communicating that stuff to you and kind of talking? Yeah. And I see a difference when you stop talking and then you're like, okay, you step back and you're like, I haven't yeah. like been talking as much as like what's going on. So, right. Then you can let it out. But yeah, you, I think you've voicing a little bit more and more. So this is something that we have to work on all the time. For me, I know my issues. I, I just got to, you know, work through them and, and keep trying. Uh, let's see what else. I saw something in here about Food Lab in Riverside. Where did that question go? I just saw it right here. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Food Lab Riverside. Where did it go? Go up. I'm going up Thanks. right now. Someone said Food Lab Riverside. I wanted to see what the question was. Um, I'm trying to see. Well, whoever posted the qu the thing about the Food Lab in Riverside, post it again at the bottom because I don't know what you had said. Um, Jill, do you think you have become more technically minded because of me? Probably. I think I have a pretty good sense. Like when things don't sound right or if I think something's wrong with something, I'm like, Chris, I, something is sounding off. And you're like, let me check it out. And you're like, oh, it is like 
I oh yeah, that so, was the day that she came home and she goes, something's that was not just, right well, about that, the car. Well, that was the car, but there's there's been other things. So but, when yeah. she said that, when she goes, something's not right about the car, it's acting funny. Um, that's because the oil had antifreeze in it. And that ruined my favorite car. That happened just on a drive home. But uh, no, but like, I don't know. I think with what, different yeah. things too, like the dryer's making a noise or the wa- like, I don't know. I'm not like, I can't really fix things like you do or taking things apart and putting it back together not my thing yeah so. i don't know where this question is about um about the food lab but yes we go to the food lab all the time we love that place so um have i ever thought about buying a crew cab truck that i can take the family with me um dave i used to have a crew cab pickup truck Uh, actually I didn't have a crew cab because I had young kids at the time. So I had an extended cab that had the opening doors on the back. Um, and yeah, that when my kids were really young, that was actually very beneficial to me. Uh, they don't necessarily go to work with me, but there was times that that made my life so much easier. But Dave, the reason why I got rid of that truck was because of the gas prices. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just, that truck was killing us. Um, but it was nice that like, I loved the quietness of that truck. And that was the cool thing too. Cause you guys could get in my work truck and it was like driving. It, there was oh, a point. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember? There was a point when that work truck was nicer than my, our personal truck. Yeah. That was a nice, that was yeah. a nice work truck. It was nice having that. I did. Mm-hmm. I do miss that truck, but there's things about the van that I absolutely love too, Dave. So, um, so. somebody asked how long we've been together, but you just. Oh, uh, let's see. Michael is saying that the food lab has vegan options. Yeah, oh, it does. Yes. We, yeah. we love Monty's that. Monty's, for yeah. sure. Monty's has a fully That's vegan I place. That's like our go-to, my go-to. Um, and the girls like some yeah. things from there. All right, let's see what else we got going on in here. Uh, yeah, the honeydew list. Oh, my gosh, guys, that honeydew list right now. Oh, it's giant. I need to, like, outsource. <laughs> yeah, that honeydew list <laughs> gonna, is I'm gonna bigger than giant. I'm going to start making some phone calls. Yeah, th- that honeydew list is bigger than giant. We, we, we just did our... F- of, we had a lot of projects. We just did the front yard. That was a nice that one. That needed to be done. That needed to be we done. We just need to make a list. And I keep telling him, we just need to make a list and start checking it off. Yeah. Uh, do I get quiet when I get mad and then blow up? I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, I, I do. You would. Yeah, Sean. Because like if you're holding it, yeah. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, what I find is again, I think the bottling up is the getting quiet. That's when I'm like, okay, I'm trying not to react, trying not to react, trying not to react, and then some that particular person or whoever does something stupid again, and then it just makes me even more angry. So yes, I do get quiet when I get mad for sure. Um, the blowing up, I I hope. Because in my eyes, the blowing up has gotten a lot better. Yeah. And I, I mean, you don't blow up at me. You no, not at you. At situations. Like yeah, never at my family. <laughs> like, it's not us. It's, not it's, it's, it's usually me like, trying not I'm to. Make it clear. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> over here freaking out of my family. No. Um, uh, have, have we done the arcade next to the food lab? We've walked in there. So, but then okay. I think it was closed or did it just we, reopen? We've gone into the arcade once or twice. And I have to say that every time I genuinely want to go to that arcade because, oh my gosh, old school arcades are amazing to me. I just want to spend hours in there playing video games. She's like, okay, this is cool. My kids are like, this is dumb. <laughs> my kids want I, nothing to do with an arcade, but she's over here yeah, like, okay. I play uh, with Pac-Man and yeah. the bowling. So I absolutely that? love that. You know what we should That's- do? We should do like uh, a HVACR videos meetup thing. I wonder if we could rent that arcade and do a meetup for people here locally. See, ideas are born. I need to write that about. down. We're going to do that. We are totally going to try to rent that place out and do an arcade day. That would be epic, right? Um, HV, I got to find another question. Way to avoid the how many years. How, how many years have we been married, Chris? Do you know the answer to that question? Good gosh. Okay, so let's preface this by saying whenever she asks me the date that we got married on, I will always tell her it was September 20th, okay? (laughs) The reason why September 20th is because that's the day we started dating. Boom. Brownie points, okay? Now, we actually got married um, April 5th or 6th. I'm sorry, uh, September 5th or 6th? One of the two? Close. What is it? September 3rd. September 3rd. There you go. I knew it was the beginning of September, but uh, I always think of the day we started okay, dating. Okay, so about how many years? How many years? I don't know. 15. We're going on 15. Yes, yes, uh, yes. No, yes. no, that wasn't a thumbs oh. up. It's a, oh. a couple more. Right, oh, we're crap. Going. 
I don't know. <laughs> do the math. I can't do math. You, you do math. Will you do the math right here? Or ask them, someone there, what's the date we got married on? We got married in 2005. So what day? September? September 3rd. September 3rd, 2005. I can't do that math. So someone do the math. Um, someone will figure it out. Do you know what it is? 17. Oh, 17. 17. There you go. Dang, we're getting closer and closer to that 20th one. Yeah. I made some silly promises about our 20th wedding anniversary, and uh, that tax bill is coming due here soon. So 17 years. Yeah. 17. Yep. Yeah. 17 yeah. as of now or 17 last year? Yeah, That's crazy. Um, all right. Let's see what else we got going on in here. Have I ever ran into a problem that caused me to come back another day to solve? Donald, yeah, Don, Donnie Old Duncan. Um, definitely one of the most um, memorable experiences that just completely destroyed me because I'm just a, such a hyper-focused person was I was working at a restaurant and uh, there's been several, but I was very young in my career, maybe a year or two in, and I was working at a restaurant on an ice machine and I was all by myself and I had to call technical support and technical support asked me what the superheat was. And I simply said, what is superheat? As in, I was asking them and that particular technical support person hung up on me. And when he hung up on me, I was embarrassed and I was ruined inside. Um, but I can absolutely guarantee you the next day, that's one of those, those moments. I told you that I learned the best from my my, my, it, my mistakes or my, my, my hurdles, because then I just get this gut wrenching something inside me that I don't know how something works. So I need to dig into it. So that night I went home and I researched everything and that was early in the internet. So Facebook wasn't even a thing yet. Uh, HVAC talk message board was the one and you would go on there. It still exists, but there was some amazing, brilliant people on HVAC talk. Uh, so it was HVAC dash talk dot com i think or something like that but um yeah that so i researched and figured it out and i came back the next day and i knew everything that that technical support person could ever want me to know right or ask me to be able to diagnose it so there's been many times that i've had to go back yeah um i used to come up with the most creative ways to tell someone i didn't know how to do something and it would always be like well i got it working but it's not really working as good as i can so i'm actually going to reach out to the manufacturer and I'm going to follow up tomorrow because I want to make sure you guys are taken care of. That was one of my most common phrases. And basically, that meant I don't know what I'm doing. I need to go home and do some research. I'll be back tomorrow. That's mm -hmm. exactly That's what good, that though. meant. You got to be confident. You know? Um, so uh, you learn to say out loud, the medication is not working today while shaking your head side to side. It helps me laugh. And then I calm down. Sean S., I'm going to tell you a joke or something funny. So I have a story. I know you're joking, but I have a story, Okay. So a uh, long time ago, the first time I went to the psychiatrist uh, for my anger issues, I was sitting in the waiting room of the psychiatrist and I didn't know that I picked an, whatever, right? I didn't know that I picked this type of psychiatrist. They had a lot of county patients and stuff. So I'm sitting in the psychiatrist's office and uh, there's clearly some people that are missing some screws in there that like, I'm like, how did they even get in here by themselves? They had some issues. And one of them was walking over to talk to me. Like I could see she made eye contact with me and she was walking over. And so I put my head into my hands and started rocking back and forth, making sure that it was completely visible. And uh, that person turned around and didn't want to talk to me anymore. So um, I have done something similar. <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's see what else we got going on in here. Uh, you have any questions? Just ask Bill. He has all the answers. Bill has all the answers. Look at that. Bill's in here. Um, let's see. He remembers see. the day you guys became best friends. When did, I saw that comment. When did we become best know. friends? I don't, I don't even know. remember, Bill. You need to tell me that, but I don't know what that date was. Um, what's one piece of equipment that continues to give me nightmares to this day? Tyler. Ah, dude. One piece of equipment that continues to give me nightmares to this day. Dude, that is a really good question, Tyler. Please send me that in an email, dude. We're going to think about that, and uh, I'll come back with this one, and maybe we'll even talk about that on the Overtime channel. So, Tyler, send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. That is a really good topic for the Overtime show, actually. Um, let me see what else we got going on in here. I'm just reaching through these. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. Oh, yes, Jason Johnson. See, I have some OG viewers in here. Oh, yeah. Jason remembers. You saw the, hu the hug. You saw the post. So 
uh, it was Bill, right? He requested. Bill sent me, he bought shirts from me one time or something. And he requested on when he purchased the shirts, you know, that uh, I hugged them before I shipped them. And so I made a point to strip down and put all his shirts on my bare chest. And then I packaged them up and shipped them to him. So, yes, Um, the OGs remembers that. That's funny. All right, everybody, we are going to wrap this up because uh, it is dinner time. We really appreciate you. Um, we'll do this again Who sometime. Made dinner? Nobody's kidding. made dinner yet. Nobody's We're going to go make dinner, dinner in a few. <laughs> um, but uh, we really appreciate you guys. We'll do this again. Uh, this is actually something that I want to do more often is have a discussion with her about this stuff. And I'd like to start. And again, that's something that I told her that we're going to do soon is it's I'm going to be just trying to find that time. I'm going to be renovating. And we're going to be moving my office into another part of my house, a much bigger room. And in that room, I'm going to have the ability to have guests like legit not being in a crammed little 10 by 10 office in here where it's extremely hot and we have to have our door open because it's like 85 degrees in here right it's now. It's comfortable for me. It is not. It, she makes it cold. Too cold in this Women's house. Women's winter is upon yeah. us. Okay. Um, but uh, we're going to be able to have more guests on too. And I want to be able to do kind of like interview style stuff. I'm an audio freak, so it's hard for me to do interviews over Skype and different things like that. But I like being in person. So we're going to set that up and be able to have more interviews. And that's something that I want to do on this channel more. Um, if I missed your guys' questions or anything like that, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. And uh, let me see what else we got uh, to go with the sticker. Thanks, guys. Oh, thank you very much, Mike B. That was really awesome, bud. Um, he just bought a shirt. Oh. Um, strippers are guests. No, they're not, Michael. <laughs> I know better than that one. Um, I, I earn brownie points all the time when I don't agree with things that my friends say in private chats. And then I show her and say, see, I said this to them because I know I'm a good husband. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. What do you not show me, though? I guess I should be. That's true. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up. We really do appreciate you. Thanks for all the support as usual, everybody. You guys, you guys are so amazing. Um, we're going to cue this up. I'll cue up the outro music Bye. and, uh, we will catch you on the next one.